Hello everybody, how's it going? Today I'm going to fix a MacBook. First I'm going to remove all these pubes from my desk. My desk has pubes on it as you can see. They're there, 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 there. That's someone else's, most likely their pubic hair, which is absolutely and utterly disgusting. And no, it's not because I have orgies in my office, it's because I work on nasty, filthy MacBooks that are filled with hair owned by people that never clean them, ever! Clean your MacBook! You filthy animal! MrFreelancer.com, man, just fixed an issue. Okay, so the first thing that's strange about this computer is that it's covered in tape. Why is there duct tape all over a MacBook? What is duct tape doing inside of a MacBook? Why would you... Oh, because of this stupid flippy floppy thing. Oh, he miss. I think he, yeah, he misrouted the wires, so he couldn't figure out how that what was going on there. Anyway, we'll fix that later. So the first thing we have to do, so we got 15 milliamps not turning on. All right. We do have a light in the charger, though. First thing I'd be kind of curious about is, do we have a peepee bus? A four volt peepee bus. Okay, so four volts is not quite enough. We need. 12.5 volt people bus. So I'm going to take the board out of this computer and we're going to take a look at it and see if we can figure it out and make it work again. So the guy who fixed my site just asked if anybody else is working on it and then said, in quote, I am not sure what I did, LOL. Well, what? something tells me that's not a solution that can be warranted right there. So the site wasn't working in Firefox, but it worked in Chrome and, and other browsers and Edge and all that. And he said, I am not sure what I did, LOL. That answer does not give me confidence. All right, so the screw got twisted. Here we go. Now we got to get this fucking screw out of there. Oh, here's my T5. Maybe we're going to replace that with a nicer screw. That's okay, what's keeping this in here? The ISL6259 is located on here on the other side of the board, and this is the area that's sticky, but that's also the chip I expect to not work because of the four volts on PP bus. Oh, Shane's getting faster at picking up the phone. Everybody, I want you to say thank you very much to Mr. Shane. Tell him he's doing a good job. Everybody in the chat, say thank you, Shane. Uh, Paul Daniels is here just in time to tell Andre that he would be better off shooting himself in the foot than taking me on as a client. Paul Daniels, how are you doing, my friend? Please do me a favor and tell our friend Andre here that he should not, under any circumstances, take me on as a client. Tell him what it was like working with me for the last. So the first area we're going to look here, since my PP Bus G3 Hot Rail is not working, is the ISL6259. The ISL6259 is responsible for creating that rail. This is an 820-00426 machine, which I do not have a schematic and board view to. However, I have a schematic to a similar one, the 820-0, I think it's 00163, let's see, do I have a schematic to this one? U7100 is what creates the peepee bus, right here, look at that, all right, so, what do you all see? Take a really... Take, take a nice look at this and tell me what you see. I want you to tell me what strikes you as strange here. Ready? What do you see? Those two resistors are destroyed. They have holes in them. They are the current sense resistors. They are going to allow the ISL6259 to know how much power the charger is using. 
The two resistors that you're looking at that are destroyed are R7122 and R7121. The way this works is the charger is over here, and it's going to open up. This transistor is going to allow the charger to flow through the machine. Now, these two transistors are going to take that 18 volts and have it pulse. So it's going to pulse up, down, up, down, up, down. So you're going to have 18 volts, zero. 18 volts, zero. 18 volts, zero. Transistors are switches, and they're switches that turn on when they have voltage present on their gate, which the ISL659 provides. It's going to go through the coil, and, this, and then this capacitor is going to smooth it out so that you have, an, instead of having 18, zero, 18, zero, you're going to have a nice even 12.6 volts, which is what it averages out to, 12.56 to be precise. Now, we need to tell how much power the system is taking. How do we do that? Well, th this chip that makes the power rail is not in the stream, so it can't know. So what it does is it puts its hand in the stream and feels how fast the water is moving, or in this case, the power is moving. This is the hand in the stream. Now, th this resistor is going to have a really tiny voltage drop across it, a really small voltage drop. And that voltage drop is going to be proportional to how much amperage the system is taking. So if there's more power being dragged through here, there'll be a higher voltage drop. Now, the ISL6259 decides to see what voltage is here, and then it also sees what voltage is here. And it is going to calculate how much amperage is being used based on the voltage difference. Now, before the ISL can touch this, there's a 10-ohm resistor. And that 10-ohm resistor, if I were to measure it, would not be 10 ohms anymore. It's going to be something much higher. See this? Open line. Dead. Further, I bet that it's shorted to ground over here, meaning if I replace those resistors, they would blow again. See? Shorted to ground. So the, what, what happened here, this is actually something that happened over the weekend. There was a customer that came in the store with a board they clearly worked on themselves, and they had replaced those two resistors. You could tell there was flux by them and they were in place fully properly. However, it was still wasn't working. They replaced, this is the symptom. The problem is the ISL6259 died. So this is dead. This is dead. But when this dies, it's going to take everything around it down with it. I'm kind of curious if the DC in resistor is also open line. No, it's not. Okay, that's actually rare. I'm used to that dying as well. So what we need to do here is replace these two resistors, and is also this, because if I replace the resistors, this is just going to kill it again. Further, if I replace the ISL6259, it's not going to work because the current sense resistors are no good. So we're going to replace that whole thing. Now you may be wondering to yourself, Lewis, why did that ISL6259 chip die? There's no water on the board, the machine looks totally fine. Well that died because it knew that it thought, you know, Lewis's employees could use some money today. And it decided that it was going to ensure that Lewis's employees don't starve. It, it, it didn't want us to have to work on buffangs and bicycles to, to feed our families. It wanted us to work on, on these lovely maps. These lovely, no problem having, just works all the time. It just works Mac. It's a Mac. Eh, I'm really just, I really should just take my hot air station. I'm just being lazy here. This is just kind of shameful at this point. Hiss. Eh, fuck it, I'll just replace that too. I did something silly and I tried to save it, which is really kind of dumb. No biggie. Okay. Now that little blinking noise is the sound of someone from freelancer.com's fixing. Okay. So I need to respond to him at the same time that I am fixing this board. Now that's a multitasking.
Uh, and uh, get that cap out of there. That was so stupid. I moved that cap over and then I just kept trying to f make it better and I just made it worse and worse and worse and worse. One of those days. But no big deal. It's just a little bit of solder. And you can always fix your mistakes. Unless, of course, you took out a reverse mortgage on your house to buy Bitcoin at $19,000. So to grab out the candy box, I had one yesterday and I had one again today. And I've actually been offering it to employees and customers. Thank you very much to Debor for sending that over. I highly appreciate it. My uh, diet does not because I've been trying to be less of a fat ass. Son of a... Oh, hell no, you're not escaping. I'm dragging you back here. I don't give a shit. I don't care how much you don't want to be on a MacBook. You are going to be on a MacBook. That is, that is it. You are going to be on this MacBook. That's right, little resistor. You don't get to run away. Anything that's not soldered perfectly will get soldered into place just fine at the end when I add some flux and I solder the main ISL chip. So anything here that looks suspect, and all of that does, watch, it's just gonna go into place very nicely. I don't wanna waste heat on those, I don't wanna, there's only so much you can heat a chip before it dies. And I don't wanna heat things unnecessarily. So it's already gonna see excess heat when I solder the ISL 6259 on, which is right next to it. So since that's the case, I might as well make use of that heat to put everything together. Knock everything into place. See how natural everything looks? Look at that. Looks factory. Push this down a little. Get rid of the excess on the sides. And beautiful. Okay, let's see if this works now. Sorry, dealing with my project. And a uh, fan spin! Bada bing! That's about it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.